Hello and welcome to Faith and Friends. It's week two of the eight facets of life. Four more simple yet potentially life-changing principles for you to apply to your everyday life. Life-changing. What would you do in your life if you knew it was going to change your life for the better? The eight facets of life all started with a Christmas gift. Chris Conley was given a calendar at work, except this calendar was different than any other. It included a page for goals, life goals, and that's how the eight facets were created. We started this series last week, personal development, family relationships, and health. Just a few of the facets, the first four facets. You can view them all at faithandfriends.wtlw.com. Well, today we bring you the final four facets. But first, a key guide to any facet of your life, the Holy Bible. The eight facets of life are simple keys designed to help you step away from the burdens of your life and walk in the direction of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 4, 17 through 24 says, I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their hearts, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanliness and greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed is in you, you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. First half of that passage, we encourage you to get it out and go through it, because there's a lot of things that you shouldn't be doing that you know uh, are making your life worse. And then the second half of the passage says, here's the things we need to be doing to be following Jesus and to be feeling uh, the effects of a, a godly lifestyle. That first half is the stuff that's most difficult to get right. out of our lives. Right. It is hard to change yeah. and to rework to the way God wants, but yet the glory that comes by being willing to go over those difficult hurdles um, is definitely very worth it. Now we head to Fast of Five in the Eight Fasts of Life. A quick web search for the word career results in over one and a half billion <laughs> results. Billion! It's a topic that touches all of our lives and too often can tilt our world out of control. We continue our series on the eight facets of life with a look at the topic of careers as Mark Kuntz joins us again with Chris Conley. Well, sooner or later we reach a point where maybe we have to make a career change or maybe we reach a point where we're just not happy with our career. How can we find a balance when we reach those points in our life? We're joined now by author Chris Conley as we continue our look at the eight facets of life, a, some small steps to solving big problems. We've talked about personal development, family, relationships, and health, and now we're going to talk about career because, let's face it, career is something each and every one of us face, whether it's a career outside the home or inside the home. We all have different careers. Yeah, and it, for most of us, it takes up more of our time than any other. When it comes to a career, very rarely do you do the same thing for 40, 50, 60 years. Mm. And a lot of people, for a lot of different reasons, are hesitant to change, yet change is continually forced upon us. Yeah, I think it's, it's a big thing. It's, we have to embrace change. And it's not to say that all change is good, but we're not going to move on unless we embrace it. Because if we're more pleasant about what's happened, then we're going to be better to be around. Um, one stat that I had heard at one time was that 80% of college graduates aren't working in their degreed field 10 years after graduation. And I experienced this personally in my work where one of my bosses came out of college and he confided in me that I don't know whether to stay or not because I'm not using my education. And I couldn't really give him good counsel at the time because I didn't, we were about the same age. But he chose to stick it out and because he did, he rose through the company and, you know, he's about ready to retire now and much better for it. And even in your life, you, you look at your career, you've had to tackle many different uh, changes, many different aspects of your job mm -hmm. and have always been able to do so with perhaps the right attitude. Yeah. Uh, for myself, I mean, I, I changed out of necessity at times because uh, my pay scale wasn't keeping up with what I needed. I went through a recession early on in my life and, and I enjoyed my work, but I couldn't provide for my family. So I looked for work elsewhere and was fortunate to find it. And through all those internal job changes, again, I kept learning more things 
and uh, it may have stunted my upward growth, but it kept me fresh and uh, I enjoyed what I did. You talked a little about pay. That brings us to two other P words, pension and passion. And perhaps too often we put the pension ahead <coughs> of the passion instead of letting the passion determine the pension. That's for sure. I think uh, a, a, another story I heard, a hundred graduates were asked at their 20 year reunion, did you chase passion or pension? And the second follow-up question, have any of you attained a net worth of a million dollars? And 91 out of the 100 admitted that they took jobs that paid the most. And the follow-up question, zero had attained a net worth of a million dollars. So that left nine. Of the nine, eight out of nine had attained a net worth of a million dollars. And on the surface, that doesn't make sense. But if you stop and think about it, they were doing work that they loved. So over time wasn't an issue. Putting in more time for projects, they were being sought out because they enjoyed their work. They were more pleasant to be around. So they were giving promotions, special opportunities, and thus the pay came. So by seeking their passion, they actually outperformed the people that were working for the money. It's great if we can find a job that, that, that finds our passion. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have trouble with that. And I think a lot of trouble also stems from <coughs> people trying to define themselves by their career and not having maybe a, a bigger picture, which, which goes back to personal development. Right. Yeah. We are, again, we spend so much time in our work, it's easy to be defined by your job. But we have to realize that there are other avenues of our life, you know, other aspects, being the family and everything else that we've talked about thus far. And achieving that balance in our life goes back to making sure that you have a life outside of work and, mm. and finding other things to, to, to work harder on yourself than maybe you work on your job. Right. That's a, that's a phrase that maybe employers wouldn't like said, but it's not saying that you don't give 100% in your job because you always should do that. But the key aspect here is what are you doing with your time away from work? Um, because if you're just soaking up TV hours or social media hours, that's really not expanding you in any way. But if you're spending that time on, again, getting back to the personal development, how can I be better? That's going to have that ripple effect through these other areas of your life. And we've, we've talked about how mental health is so important, and, and that goes right hand in hand with career, making sure you have that positive mental attitude, which will also allow you to have perhaps a better physical health as well. And what other tips do you have for, for folks looking to, to achieve a better balance with career? Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing I found, there is a guy that I've met personally, and he's got a website, 48days.com, and his name's Dan Miller, and he's a career coach. But he also talks about how our career affects every other aspect of our life. He currently lives in the Nashville area and teaches on this subject but uh, he grew up in the Holmes County area as a Mennonite. And uh, he's a genius when it comes to career. And he's got a weekly podcast that I listen to and uh, a newsletter that comes out and he gives away so much free information. If you're struggling with career, you gotta look this, check this guy out. All right, thank you very much, Chris. And speaking of teaching, Chris also teaches his eight facets of life as part of a workshop. If you're interested in bringing him in to discuss the eight facets of life with your group or organization, you can contact him at theconleys102 at gmail.com. And if you've missed any of our previous uh, entries in the eight aspects of life, they are available online at faithandfriends.wtlw.com. Facet number six coming up in just a moment, but first an auction update and take a look. <laughs> take a look at this. I wonder why she was holding a phone. Is it for me? Uh, you can even, it's got the turn crank. Well, kind of the turn crank Hello? on the side. Uh, well, you have to hook it up. I guess in today's, does it still work, though? today's day and it does work, but okay. how, do you have a landline at home? We have one, but it's I not do active. too. I, I have one too. It's not active either. <laughs> Your auction donations are welcome here at TV44, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And this is one of them, by the and way. And this is one of them that you can bid on September the 8th. The 9th. 9th. The 9th. September the 9th. Call us with any questions. You can come help us set up on September the 8th. That's we'll what I was getting at. Yeah. your help for sure. We'll 9 a.m. You get donuts and then pizza. That's right. Thrive and Financial is doing a sponsorship this year, so they're going to provide some good food. Oh, really? And uh, yeah, so there's oh, definitely man. reason to come help set up on September 8th. I'm and then excited. definite reason to come on September 9th. You could buy this phone and other things. All right. So September 9th is the auction. Uh, the Bible teaches quite a bit about money. The love of it is the root of all evil. Where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Pay unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and under God what is God's. It's been an important topic for all of history and certainly remains so today. 
And in this installment of the Eight Facets of Life, Mark and Chris take a closer look at finances and keeping it in balance with the other facets of life. We continue our series on the eight facets of life, joined by author Chris Conley as we continue to take a look at ways we can achieve better balance. We've talked about personal development and family. We've talked about relationships. We've talked about health. We've talked about career. And next, we're going to talk about finance, which a lot of times goes hand in hand with career. But yeah. also, there's a lot more to finance than simply just the job. It's also how we tend to use that money that we make from the job. Yeah, I've, I've heard studies that people call it in to a radio show and said, what do you make and what would it take to be better financially? And pretty much there were people called in making 30,000 a year and they thought if they made 60, it would be great. There were people called in that were making 60 that thought they needed 100. And it just went on and on. And the fact of the matter is, it seems like for most people, they think that they just need a little bit more in order to get by. And a little bit more, and a little bit more, mm. and a little bit more. <clears throat> and not only do they want a little bit more, but they want it right now. Exactly. So when you talk about finances, it's also very important to, and we've, we've touched on this in some of our other discussions, having that long view, delaying the short-term satisfaction in order to fulfill some long-term goals. Right. We, we can't chase the shiny object. Um, you know, there's people that would stand in line for the next telephone and pay the top price, or in my case, I play golf, going out and buying new golf clubs. But if you wait a year, you're going to get that same product for about half the price. So um, I know my parents, they bought nothing on credit. If they didn't have the cash, they didn't buy it. And I wasn't quite there. I was almost there. But um, credit is so easily attainable at this point in time. And the key is that if you use credit, you have to get that paid off in the 30 days. And when you talk about credit, that also goes back to having a budget, and it goes back to it's easy to write down what you want to spend, but then it comes back to that commitment of sticking to that budget. Right. Um, I've heard Dave Ramsey make the comment that every dollar has a name, so meaning that anything that I make is going to go to a certain place. And this is important, and I think the earlier we can teach that to our children, the better. Um, there's been people that I've talked to, or listened to, I should say, that have talked about you know, the envelope system, where we had a uh, save envelope, a uh, give envelope, and a share envelope. And letting the kids make mistakes when they're young isn't a bad thing, because it's better to make a $5 mistake on a junk toy than it is to not have that training and then go out and make a $1,000 mistake or a $10,000 mistake later in life. Well, I think that's part of the, what <coughs> the problem is the fact that you know, we, I don't want to get into a deep financial discussion here, but you, when, once the United States and the other currencies went off the gold standard and all of a sudden dollar's a dollar because we say it's a dollar, money no longer necessarily has the same credible, tangible backing that it did hundreds of years ago when, if you want to go to a barter system, but for, particularly with children, if, if you want to teach them the value of money, you really do need to have some tangible evidence, which is why I think that envelope system is so good and why some parents will debate you on whether allowances are good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've heard uh, some speakers talk about the allowance. They don't like the term. Um, they've created like a, a mini economic system inside their house. So as the kids do chores, they're paid on Saturday. And along with that, the older they are, they're actually given the opportunity to go buy their school clothes. And if you're going to go to that extent, it's really important that you allow them to make the choices they're going to make. Now, within reason, you've got to have some guidelines. But I heard a couple talk about their daughter was all about the designer stuff. So she could only buy two or three outfits, where the son was all about the bargains. So he spent half his money that he was allotted. And she was done laundry every third night, and he was done laundry every two weeks. So it made a big difference in the way they were raised and how they took care of their belongings because they had some sweat equity in it. And I think that's interesting also that you have to be aware that Different people are going to learn different ways. Mm -hmm. So what works for one child, what works for one family, isn't going to necessarily work for all of them. Right. Yeah. You've got a, a seven-step uh, plan for budgeting? Yeah, well, it's actually Dave Ramsey. He's probably the most well-known person with uh, finance. And I won't go through all seven, but the first two, the first one was to save $1,000 for an emergency plan. And I agree with that 100%, because when the washer or dryer breaks, you've got to get that fixed. Or a car repair, uh, it's not only going to... Uh, add 
time to your workload, going to the laundromat, it's going to cost you more money. So you've got to have that emergency fund. The second one that I think the majority of, or many people have a problem with, is debt. And they've let these credit cards get out of uh, whack. Um, I, I believe that his logic is you list all your debts in from lowest to largest and then work with a vengeance to knock off number one and then number two and work your way down. And initially when I heard that, it didn't make sense because I, my thought was go after the highest interest. Mm -hmm. But his comeback was um, logical thinking didn't put you in this mess. Logical thinking is not going to get you out of it. So with that, I agree 100%. And I, and I understand he calls it the debt snowball. So by knocking off that first debt and then moving quickly to the second, you've got that momentum and you feel good about it and you continue on the progress. Yeah, there's a sense of accomplishment it, saying, yeah, I've, exactly. I've gotten that one completely taken care of. That's out of the way. Thank you very much, Chris, as we continue with our Eight Facets of Life series. If you've missed any of the previous uh, episodes, you can catch up on those online at faithandfriends.wtlw.com. <coughs> and Chris is available to teach the Eight Facets of Life through workshops with your group or organization. You can contact him at theconleys102 at gmail.com. Sky Zone Toledo. Oh, that's Two good. Two deluxe tickets to 10th Avenue North from Shine FM. All right. Magic Mountain in Columbus. I was thinking Magic Mountain in California. Well, we'll take a donation from them as also, <laughs> if they're watching, which they're probably not, but Science Central in Fort Wayne. All right. Kings Island. Just Ohio, there last week. Ohio State University, College of Arts and Sciences Theater Department. Nice. Mad River Mountain. African Safari Wild Par Wildlife Park and COSI. All kinds of great trips and Trip adventures donations. for your family for the coming up at the auction. That's right. The TV44 auction is September 9th. Um, you know, one of the really great things about the TV44 auction is it's a day of a lot of fun. Hmm. It's not just fun because you can win a trip like this and go home, but it's fun because it's a family event. Um, it's a, for a really good cause and um, it's a tradition for many people. It is. Hundreds of people will converge here at the TV station, and our friends at Cart Customs will be chauffeuring everyone around That's from right. the, the grass out to our. You can't see my hand that way. So, <laughs> uh, to, to my. What was that? The north? Yeah, to That's the, north. the north. This nice, you know, back seat of a golf cart. You get to ride across and get taken right to the auction. The big tent is set up. If it rains, there's great underground. Rained You're not underground. Year. It rained last year and we were all safe yep. and dry inside that tent. So make plans now to bring your family September the 9th. There's always good food, pies. I know Jen Westenbarger and some ladies from Macomb already baking pies. Oh. Not already baking them. Because a two month old pie probably wouldn't be <laughs> you great. You could freeze it and it would be okay. But they will bake a lot that week of. Lots of great enjoyment. So we encourage fun. you. Fun. Lots of come out for fun. fun. Yeah. Well, we continue our look at Chris Conley's eight facets of life with some tips on that very subject, the subject of fun. Hmm. How to go about it in a way that continues to bring the balance in your life that you need to have. Getting everything you need to out of fun. Fun! Are you having fun? We all strive to have fun, but how many of us actually achieve that? Well, we're gonna hopefully maybe give you some tips as author Chris Conley joins us once again as we continue our look at the eight facets of life achieving a, a balanced life and we've talked about personal development we've talked about family relationships we've talked about health we've talked about career we've talked about finance let's talk about fun which is a little bit of a catch-all because we all define fun a little bit differently but let's face it without fun life is really quite dreary right and like you mentioned fun is different to everyone it's kind of like uh, beauties in the eyes of the beholder so some people would turn up their nose when i say i play golf uh, but someone else may feel the same way about something else that I wouldn't care for. And I think one thing that we need to make <clears throat> sure we get out of whatever we determine is fun, it has to rejuvenate us. Right. I think that's the key is, you know, if we can be refreshed, then we're going to come back with more of a, uh, the better aspect that we can do our jobs better, we can be better parents, things along that line. What is maybe the biggest stumbling block people have to finding fun and enjoying their life with fun? Well, I, I think probably from a family perspective, it's what can we do that everyone's going to enjoy, you know, and that's going to be, again, like you said, different for everyone. But I found that some of the things that, you know, if you can get your family involved at a younger age, 
just taking a walk together um, through the woods, things along that line. We'd take our dog and, and we all enjoyed that and looked forward to doing those kind of things. Spending time with families, building relationships that all kind of builds in together. Mm -hmm. And if we can maybe find ways to do fun things that also can help us in our other areas, whether it be health, whether it be family, whether it be the friendships, that's a great way to, to keep things fresh, to keep things fun, is finding ways to kind of check off two boxes at once. Right. Yeah. I've called this twofers, and I know that's not proper English or grammar, but the fact is, as I mentioned, I play golf. And when I golf, I always walk. You know, 90% of the people take a cart. So I feel like golf takes a fair amount of time, but I'm also getting some physical exercise at the same time. And also, you're going to build some relationships if you're with anyone. And that could be your family as well. So I found it to be a career enhancer. Uh, you know, like I say, it's got its health benefit. So the more things you can find like that, the better. And it's, it's important to find fun things, but there's kind of different, two different types of activities. There's active activities, and then there's maybe some passive activities, which could lead to some bad habits as well. That's for sure. Um, I think, you know, we have to be open and flexible to new things. Uh, I can recall when my dad was alive, he was quite a gardener. And I tried it, but my um, intensity wasn't there, and the weeds soon took over. But now... At this point in my life, I enjoy gardening, and my wife and I both produce them. We've created an orchard, so that wasn't something that was important to me 20 years ago, but our, our interests do change over time. I suppose it's easy to say I want to have more fun. We find other things in life that creep in that maybe take away time to have fun, but like these other aspects, these other facets of life we've talked about, there is a commitment to making sure we have some of that time in order to have the mental health, in order to build our relationships, in order to and personally develop. Right. You know, this by um, all stretch imagination is the, is the one of the eight that is the most difficult to find the time for, especially as a, as a young parent. There's just not time in the day. But I think if you're really um, constructive in, in how you can design things, you can find things that the whole family can enjoy. I remember hearing someone talk about, uh, made a quote, instead of spending so much time planning a two-week vacation, why not create a life that you don't need to escape from? And I think maybe some people maybe have a hard time having fun because they feel as if, if I'm having fun, I'm not devoting time to other aspects, mm -hmm. that maybe that becomes an issue with them. Yeah, and when we, we've been talking about balance, and balance doesn't mean equality. It's not like a teeter-totter that every aspect has equal time. When we talked about career, we know that's going to be the most time. Fun might be the least, but the fact is we still have some time for that. And it goes back to your, your diagram on the eight facets of life. The fact that it, it is a circle, it is a wheel, that all eight aspects are equally important. Right. They're equally important, but that doesn't mean equally in as far as time spent. What other tips do you have for, for people? What other resources do you have for people who, who need to have a little bit more balance with yeah. the fun aspect. Again, I think the big thing is it needn't be costly. That's where a lot of people stumble. Um, but as far as pointing people to certain websites, it all going to depend on interest. You know, it, for myself, I might look at a golf website or a Mother Earth News website. Uh, for someone that's into, you know, I've got a friend that's uh, auto repair or woodworking. They're getting their twofers because they're also making some money at their at their hobby or what they call as fun. So the key is that there's, there's places to look, and almost any magazine that you like has a website that would give you some free tips. All right. Thank you very much, Chris. We're going to wrap up our eight facets of life on our next episode, and it is perhaps the most important. It is faith, and that's no surprise in coming here at WTLW. If you would like to contact Chris and have him teach his eight facets of life workshop for your group or organization, you can email him at theconleys102 at gmail.com. You can also view our previous installments of the Eight Facets of Life online at faithandfriends.wtlw.com. So we've discussed personal development, family, relationships, health, careers, finance, and fun. We conclude our series of the Eight Facets of Life with the most important the one aspect that touches on all the other aspects of the present life and the only one that impacts the eternal life, faith.
Over the last several weeks, we've gone through the eight facets of life with author Chris Conley. Some common sense approaches to finding balance in our life. We've talked about personal development, family, relationships. We've talked about health. We've talked about career and finances. We've talked about fun. And finally, we're going to talk about faith, which is really the bedrock for not only the seven other facets of life, but the bedrock of life for, for many of us, yourself and myself included, and certainly an important part of the TV44 message. Yeah. Um, in my design of the eight facets, I put it at the bottom as, a, as the foundation because at this point in my life, I do realize that is, it is the foundation of our life. Let's talk about a little bit about first things first when it comes to faith. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up primarily as an Easter Christmas Christian. And uh, um, it wasn't until we were about to be married that my wife and I decided we didn't want to be hypocrites. We were going to join a church. And we started going to church. And um, even at that point in time, I was regular in the winter. But because I was a golfer, I was playing golf in the summer. But at some point, a message struck me that this wasn't enough, and I became a 52-week-a-year Christian. And uh, as our kids came along, I decided I don't want to drop them off at Sunday school. I'm going to go to Sunday school. So things just started to click when I got my priorities in order. And we alluded to this a little bit earlier when we were talking about personal development. It's never too late to start. And certainly when it comes to faith, it's never too late to start with faith as well. It doesn't matter when you start your faith journey. Mm. It's a matter of staying on that faith journey. Right. Um, there's so much that, that can be learned. And, um, I, you know, I, I came to Christ primarily when I was 21, but my, my interest and my understanding have done nothing but mature over time. So. And when we talk about maturing over time, it goes back to something that I, I believe your mother taught you, my mother taught me, many mothers, many fathers have taught their children that we reap what we sow, so the more that we sow, the later than we sow. Right. And, you know, this is from Galatians 6. And the idea is that we have to give first. And, at that, and later in life, we're going to reap those benefits. Some people may not. This isn't a guarantee because we know that some people give, 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 and they, they never see anything. But we know that after, they're going to receive everything and then, and then some. And as, as you touched on, faith is the bedrock because when you talk about reaping what you sow, talk about giving back, that goes back to what we talked about with relationships, to make sure it's a two-way street, to, mm -hmm. to be a friend in order to, to have a friend, further proof that you know, faith really infuses the other seven aspects of the life. And it's, it's something that, as you've touched on, it came to you a little bit later in life, but it's never too late to get into church. It's never too late to get into that faith journey. It's never too late to find balance in your life. Right. And, you know, the Bible talks to us about uh, some Christians are, are like a baby with the milk being fed and, and others at different phases of their life. So um, the best way that I think, though, is you find a good Bible-based church if you're not there already and you join a Sunday school class. I mean, sermons are great. It's a lecture format. The Sunday school class is really what opened me up to learning more. And faith is fantastic. Faith is very important. But faith without action is useless. Right. Um, you know, the saying that be prepared to preach a sermon anytime and use words if necessary, that's something that I always liked. It, it's the life that we live that's going to make a difference. We can say many, many things, but if we don't back it up with our life, it means nothing. And, you know, people are going to struggle through different aspects of these eight facets, which is why faith is, is perhaps what we need to, what is most important that we're discussing right now, because a lot of this just goes back to prayer taking time communicating with the Lord and really getting a sense of where he is leading you. Mm -hmm. the, uh, I've taught, as you mentioned, I've taught this many times in the past and I've asked the people and were participants what is the most important. And as a group, it's always been faith was number one. Not to say that everyone agreed because they were at different faith journeys. But the key is that people understand that when I put first things first, everything else in my life is going to come to play. Now you've developed this eight facets of life uh, over many years. How have you seen this impact you and, and others? Well, it's impacted me the most because I'm the uh, 
the one that put it together naturally. I feel like though, as I prepare to come to the station today, uh, as I prepare to talk with others about it, it does make me a better person just leading up to that day because it reinforces everything that I believe. But again, if I don't continue in the word, um, it's easy to, to drop off some. You know, we talked about the exercise. You gotta make those kind of habits and church is the same kind of thing. I can get in the habit of going and being regular and I can also fall out of it once I miss a week or two. What other resources can you re recommend for people as they look to achieve better balance with their faith aspect? I think the big thing is um, daily devotions, for sure, um, because it's not just about going to church on Sunday. Um, but I also like, we talked about twofers earlier, <clears throat> I, I use um, my telephone, and when I do a workout, I'll watch many sermons through podcasts or just through their website. You have Charles Stanley, David Jeremiah, Joel Osteen here. I like all those. Uh, I also like Kyle Eidelman, James Merritt. All right. Thank you very much, Chris Conley. As we have discussed the eight facets of life, and Chris is available to teach this as a workshop for your group or organization, you can contact him at theconleys102 at gmail.com. You can also catch up on the other seven aspects of life, facets of life, on our website, faithandfriends.wtlw.com. There you have it, the eight facets of life with Chris Conley. As Mark just said, these segments can be viewed again anytime online at faithandfriends.wtlw.com. And you can invite Chris to speak to your group by emailing theconleys102 at gmail.com. You can also call us here at TV44 and we can help you get connected with Chris Conley. We leave you today with two more reminders. Number one, the auction. The time is now to bring your donations to TV44. Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. You can call us with questions on what you can and cannot bring and other drop-off times if the ones we just mentioned don't work for you. Our second reminder, the 2017 Faith Challenge. We're into month seven, which means we're on workout step number seven, mm -hmm. being obedient to God's leading. We're watching TV44 all throughout this month as we share scriptures with you designed to encourage you to step back, take some time, Ask God, what is your direction for my life? And then be willing to step out and follow it. It all starts by reading this word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We encourage you to continue to dive into that lamp and that light. As you go, rest of your week. Have a good one.